Hey everybody, welcome to the Dad Jones Podcast. My name is Josh. Thank you for joining me today on this very special episode. I'm so excited because not 20 minutes ago, I got a call from the police. You heard it here. Micah called the police on me. So I'm like, let's do this. I don't know what else to say. Like, we got to spin the wheel and we'll get this rolling. Okay, let's, uh, let's do it. Let's spin and dance, shall we? Yeah, baby. Oh. Nose boop. That's a Patreon? That's weird. Nose boop. This one's for you. I don't know what it is today. I just can't get my vibe down. I don't know. Something is off. I'm trying to figure it out. I don't know what it is. But let's get on to the next one here. Let's dance. Yeah, baby. Susan Daniels. This one's for you. <laughs> Let's roll. Thank you to whoever bought me these tiny hands. I appreciate it. I was gonna try to do the whole vlog. I can't, my fingers can't do things. Can't press the mouse, I got things to do. So thank you for whoever bought me these fingers. Namaste. Blessings to you. There's a tape, my wife taped these on and, uh oh. Oh man. <laughs> All right. This is one of those sweaters you can buy at my store, so check it. All right, so here's the deal. I'm sitting on my couch post-nap. Kids and I just watched uh, The Prince of Egypt. It's great, and I fell asleep because it's a Sunday afternoon nap, and that's what dads are supposed to do. And I'm sitting there, I wake up, and I'm like, oh, yeah, that's nice. And I get a call. My city's regional police department. I'm like, what did my kid do? First of all, I was like, someone's dead. One of my kids did something. They're dead. And the guy, and he picked up the hello. He's like, hi, is this, is this Josh? I'm like, yeah. He's like, do you know someone named Micah? And I'm thinking, well, yeah, but I mean like, Micah Stoffer? And he's like, yeah, that's it. I'm like, okay. <laughs> so funny. So the guy goes on, he's like, okay, I just, I just had to let you know, I got a, I got a complaint. I got a call from this lady talking about, do you do videos about somebody? I'm like, yes, I do. And he, he's still confused. I'm like, uh, you know that this lady that called you is from the US. He's like, I know, and it's just weird, and I thought I was gonna follow up with this and just trying to figure out what's going on. Uh, she says you're harassing her videos and all this kind of stuff, and he's like, can you walk me through what's going on? And I'm like, absolutely. I'll walk you through what's going on. So I'm like, I'm in, I'm like, first of all, it's woke up from a nap. So I'm like, is this happening? I'm a local guy. I do this as a side hustle. He's like, is this your job? I'm like, it's sort of my job. Yeah, I, I get a little bit of money for this and it's not my main job, but I do it. And he's like, okay, so you begin to consider yourself media? I'm like, yeah, I consider myself media, like a commentator, um, not a journalist. I did not say those words. But he's like, okay, so walk me through what's going on. I said, like, okay, here's the story. So I do on YouTube what's called commentary or reactionary commentary, meaning I take someone's video and I break it down and I make fun of them. And I said, and I, I do what's called snark. Basically, I make fun of them. And he's like, okay. He's like, he's, he's sort of with me at this point. I said, well, the person I just called you, do you not really know who she is? He's like, no. I'm like, okay, here's what I want you to do. I want you to go Google Micah Stoffer. And as he's doing that, I tell him, like, she is a lady who is a family vlogger, a very rich family vlogger who made tons of money by adopting a kid from China. And then when life got a little bit too hard for them, they, they rehomed him and became one of the most hated internet people on YouTube. 
He's like, really? And I'm like, so this is what I do. And I told him what I did. My whole job here is to stop the exploitation of children online and everything. He's like, oh, that's cool. Start talking, we're having, you know, we're, we're shooting the shit. And the guy's like, okay, well, that seems normal. <laughs> He's like, I've never spoken to someone like you. I gave him the tea. I'm like, I just said, look, she's someone who is atrocious in what she's done. I'm an adoptive dad myself. And so this hit me home. And, you know, this is what I do on the internet. So in order to bring awareness to these people, I snark on them. And he's with me. And all of a sudden I hear him just like, oh, NBC. The guy is Googling Micah at the same time we're talking. And he's like, oh my God. He's just, he's just like reading the articles. He's like, oh my God. <laughs> I'm like, so you see, so he's like, look, I have to ask you. If I ask you to stop doing videos about Micah, are you going to stop doing videos about Micah? And I said, absolutely not. No, I'm not. <laughs> so I, I know my rights. He's like, good. Thank you. No worries. I just had to ask you. Just, you know, she called us and I thought, why not check up on it? Again, I'm not sure of the leg legality of it. If someone calls from the U.S. and says that this guy's making videos about me, making fun of me, I think he was probably calling me more to curiosity than anything else. And I'm fine with it. But I said, no, I'm not going to stop. And, you know, uh, if you look her up, she's one of the worst of the worst of the worst. And I'm like thinking to myself, Micah, really? Did you think I, what did you think I was going to do? I think what Mike and James are trying to do and obviously I have no proof of this, is they are actually trying to come back right now, this moment. I hadn't done a video in probably a month and a half or two months on them, and they were like, okay, this shit's starting to, you know, it's st starting to, you know, it's starting to like fade out, and people aren't gonna hate it as much. I mean, Micah, do you honestly believe that if you did a video right now, even after someone didn't do a video about you for six months, that the entire commentary world isn't gonna explode on your first video, your first five videos? Because if you do come back, Micah, I'm going to snark on every single one of your videos. I don't care how. I'm not gonna let people forget what you did to H, what you and James did to H. I'm not gonna let it stop. So, do you honestly believe that this shit would just blow over? You guys are one of the most cancelable people in the world for what you did to another human being. A kid with autism that you adopted from China, brought here, made money off of, duct taped, and duct taped one of these tiny hands to that, by the way, and made fun of him, and treated him like garbage, treated him like, an, like a second-hand citizen in your own house, used him for money, bought houses, houses, so we're going to talk about that today, took PPP loans, okay? And then rehome this kid using Facebook. You think the internet's going to forget about that? And some people do think that. The people that are likely helping them are like, you know what? Just let it blow over. You can come back and, and use your platform to make money. Uh-uh, Micah. I'm never going to let the internet. I don't care what it takes. I don't care if you want to cancel me. Whatever the case may be. You are enemy number one as far as family vlogging goes. You are the catalyst for this whole movement. For what you've done has exposed the entire movement for family vloggers. Thank you for that. So... In honor of that, today we're going to walk you through a little bit about what's going on in Micah's world. I've exposed a little bit about Micah and uh, what's been going on with her. And I was considering texting Micah myself and saying, really? You're going to call my own police on me? Like, what did you hope to do? If, look, people out there on the internet and in the, in the world hear this. What I do on here is can be considered bullying some people, whatever the case may be. I don't think so. I think it's commentary because I'm literally reacting to their stuff. Okay. I'm showing you their stuff and I'm reacting to it. Take it as is. But in order to prove libel and slander, especially in Canada, it's like 10 times harder than it is in the US. Needless to say, not that I don't know, but why doesn't Micah just call a lawyer? I don't know. But calling the police, I don't know what she, what she expected to happen. She thought I was just gonna run away scared because like, the police were called on me. Guys, I have a clean record. I've got nothing. I don't even have a speeding ticket, okay? I am a loser vanilla dude with nothing. So with I know my rights to him, not stupid. So the cop was just asking. He's like, you're not going to stop? I'm like, absolutely not. He's like, okay, sounds good. So that's how the conversation ended. And then I got a message from a friend uh, on my um, Dad Challenge podcast page. And I'm getting some updates recently. And I've been, I've been saving this for something special. And I'm like, what's more special than this? What's more special than Micah calling the police on me? So I got, she sent me this website. She says, I don't know if you've ever seen this. But this is Micah Belisari, a.k.a. Micah Stuffer. When she was young and dumb. Well, young and, and dumb and the same. And so she had a bunch of Yahoo questions, okay? <laughs> and some of these are doozies. I think it's going to be very eye-opening to what, how Micah got her NCLEX, okay? So this is what I'm thinking. Okay, so let's go through it. The first question she asks is, what would happen if bicarbonate was not secreted via pancreatic juice? And... Something tells me she's looking to cheat on her exams or can't study, so she's asking the internet, so... I don't know anything. Okay, anyway. 
Heart anatomy, question mark. So this is one decade ago she was asking these questions. I love Yahoo Answers because this is how we got Jess Fam's receipts for us to prove that she got pregnant at 17 on purpose to be famous. I love Yahoo Answers holds all the tea receipts and we love it. So she asked questions like how to create stronger willpower for healthy eating. Um, how does one heritage affect the way you view one views the world? Something tells me she might have been called racist for something or something. Um, pocket knife rule. What is this? I haven't seen this. I'm going through them with you. Pocket knife rule. What is the length of a pocket knife permitted in the state of Ohio? The blade measurement. What? Micah, what are you planning on doing with a, what? The blade can't be longer than your palm and the whole knife can't be longer than your hand from the tip of the middle finger to the top of your wrist. So that's like a, so that's like a, careful ladies. I don't know, like a seven inch blade in Ohio. Wow, it's crazy. What if you have tiny hands like Rock Source Rex? You can only carry a knife like this big? This. So your knife can only be this big? <laughs> Sorry, Rock. Um, by and large, I would say the three inch blade applies most anywhere. Ohio, new state law regarding blade length. Why is she asking, first of all, why is she asking about what size blade she can carry? That's creepy to me, man. I wanna take. <laughs> It's a decade ago. This is before James, okay? I want to take my boyfriend on an amazing date. Have any ideas? I want to rock my boyfriend's world and take him on a date that he's never been on before. Skydiving, someone says, favorite answer. When most people think of rocking someone's world, they mostly think of sex. If you are sexually active, there are some ideas I can give you. Contact me and we can talk. That sounds creepy. If you aren't, then let me know. I, too, have some non-sexual ideas as well. That's nice. Give him a couple bottles of champagne, a porn flick, and a nice card. On the card, write, happy fantasy date. I am yours for XX hours. Anything goes. Satisfy your every desire and fantasy. I love you. Give it to him in a nice private intimate setting. Bring some extra lube in your purse and mean what you say and get ready for a bumpy ride. Is it hot in here? Woo! If my wife gave me that card, wow. Is all I'm gonna say to that. <laughs> Anonymous, that is a good idea. Just saying. <sighs> Sheesh. Whew. The pockets and stuff. Jeez. That's. Am I blushing? Okay. Whew. All right. Sorry. How can I prevent being jealous? <laughs> Micah. Prevent. Okay. I mean, seriously, you don't have friggin' spell check. How should I prevent being a jealous type? I hate being jealous over someone I love or trying to compete with my boyfriend or someone trying to compete with my boyfriend. I was an only child. Now I always want my way and rarely and rarely, but still sometimes fight for no known reason for no, no reason. Please, please help me out. I love him. Yet I seem to create drama and that is not my style. Thanks. Yeah, it's like Jess fam. I don't like confrontation, but every video I make is the confrontation. So she's, this is very eye-opening to the world of Micah. Okay, she's, she's like, I hate, because she's super jealous. She always wants her own way. Like, we know that. Like, we've, we've, we've stated that. She just said it here. She gets her own way. James is definitely the beta in the relationship. 100%. Top answer from Wet Dream Diver. <laughs> But the top answer is from Wet Dream Diver. <laughs> Jealousy is a wasted emotion. It makes neither one of you happy and doesn't prevent the other from doing what they want or what you don't want them to do. So what's the point? That's the best answer. Are you serious? Jealousy is wasted. If someone is paying attention to a woman I am seeing or dating and he's hitting on her, I see it as I must have something decent for some are to hit on her. I'm comfortable in who I am and have to offer what, if she decides to seek the attention of the person, let her and no longer desires me well, next. <laughs> this shitty advice is shitty. <laughs> this, is this is amazing. I'm so excited that I found this. Someone found it for me. Um, <laughs> someone is passing away, question mark. Let's read this. Talk about giving the world your inner information. My boyfriend's stepdad has skin cancer and he is a doctor and will not go to treatment because he knows too much. He often sits around and we know his time is running short. 
Me and my boyfriend want to plan a special day to create never-ending memories with him. Anyone have any ideas, fun things that would mean a lot without spending a lot? I'm a college kid. I don't have a lot of money yet. This means so much to me. I want this to be special. I love him and my boyfriend so much, and it's hard to know that he is drifting. Again, you could have just asked, someone's passing away, is there something to do to make memories? She gave too much information. Like, that's TMI, right? She's the person that you get in conversation with, and she gives you too much information. You're like, oh, I don't want to talk to you anymore. Okay, cool, bye. Next. Music. Why music affects me. So Mike is like, what, in her 20s here? Music often makes me feel hyper or more sexual, as long as it has the right kind of beat. Why does music make people feel this way? Let's, we gotta play the music, cue the music. Because, Micah, when you get into that groove, you know, it's like the boys to men guy that only does the, hey baby, I know I've been gone for so long. Did you wait while I was gone? I went and grabbed some Chick-fil-A for us too. When I get back, things are on. We can watch Netflix and stuff. We're gonna eat this Chick-fil-A. It's gonna be like, what? And then we're gonna like do other things and stuff. So get ready. Girl. <laughs> wow, you <laughs> who answers is amazing. Okay. Next question. Improve storytelling skills for me. I have a shitty vlog and I am so bad at telling stories. How do I tell better stories? Well, don't. How would I improve my storytelling skills? I sometimes want to tell my story so quickly that I don't have the right words to explain it. I know that means I ought to slow down and I have a good vocab. <laughs> I just don't quite know what to do. <laughs> oh my God, that's funny. I'm genuinely like, I guess narcissistic people don't see that their weakness, they don't see their weaknesses, right? They just think everything that they do is amazing, incredible, and all that stuff. They don't see the weaknesses. Anyway. So start writing poems and read them with a feeling. It'll help you slow down and give life to your story. Believe it or not. I think that was it, that was it. Oh no, there's another one here. How to prevent breaking a promise. Oh, this is some GCT. My boyfriend and I have been dating for some time. However, he now feels as though things are not equal. Yeah, probably because you do not. She married this guy because he's going to be a doctor or whatever. He's going to make a bunch of money. And she said that. She literally, yeah, it's not equal because you don't do anything, Micah. He would give up anything for me. And selfishly, I am not the same way. I'll say I'm going to call him at a set time and then I'll break my promise. I will also say I'm not going to drink and then find some random excuse to drink. I don't know why I keep breaking my promises. I love him and I want to be perfect girlfriend for him. Please help me. This is Mike in a nutshell. Everything she does, she makes rash decisions that affect everyone around her. Like all the baby daddy, like the baby daddies, the getting pregnant in college and, you know, just getting pregnant for YouTube views and finally hitting an algorithm, adopting a kid from China to make money. This is what she does. And she just does it because she's, 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 what's the word? Is it compulsive or impulsive? There's somebody correcting me. It's one of those. She's compulsive or impulsive? Compulsive, I don't know. Impulsive, maybe. She makes her decisions impulsively. She doesn't think about it. She just goes and does it. And then she gets into the situation she's in now, which is calling the police on me. <laughs> Can I please speak to the police manager? We're going to, yeah, okay. You only have a few choices. You can leave them and you might give up for yourself. You can continue until he leaves you, which would make you hate and regret what you've been doing. You can continue until he's really sad all the time and depressed, which will make you spend less time with him and break more promises. If you want the perfect girlfriend, you have to put him first, not just change around him because anything you break a promise for putting in front of him, you're practically saying drinking is more important calling what I don't say is more important. You're putting him down. Yeah, this is basically what happened. She, she claimed that Josh cheated on her. Josh did not cheat on her. Let's just be real. That's the T. He did not cheat on her. And she said he did, and he did not. She did, allegedly. Sounds like you're an alcoholic or you're well on your way. Alcohol and promises of any kind don't mix. Stop drinking and only make a promise when it's vitally important. This is internal, as you feel there's no consequence for your action. Boom! This anonymous writes this perfect sentence. Every mistake that Mike has made is internal. She feels that there's no consequences for her actions no matter what she does. Could you imagine being someone on YouTube and not foreseeing what would happen when you rehomed an adopted kid from China who has autism. You do not, because she honestly believed there would be no consequences for action. They honestly didn't see that coming. I bet you to this day they're like, what? Why are people so upset? 
To this day, they probably think that. One might also say that you hold others in contempt as you, as you care not to make good on your promises. You feel that you are free to do as you choose until you decide to stop this behavior, it won't change. Anonymous. To keep from breaking a promise, it's rather simple. Don't make them. Don't say I will, say I'll try. If you know you're not being big on promises, don't make them until you're sure. That's good, that's good advice. Thanks, Micah, for those questions of the day. In other Micah news, it's kind of crazy, actually. So this person that reached out to me, they don't want to shout out. They said, I don't know if you know this, but Micah and James purchased two adjacent properties, one being a home and one being land. So the one the other parcel being 45 acres, it seems one parcel is nearly 600,000 and the other was nearly 500,000. So Micah and James not only bought a place in Ohio for over $750,000, they also bought $1.1 million worth of property elsewhere. Now, I'm not sure if they've sold their house in Ohio and they're moving here. Likely they're moving. I'm not going to tell you where it is. I'm not going to show you pictures, but it needs to be said. Mike and James made so much money and the adoption is what got them where they are. And James's platform took off because of it too. All because of H. All because of that little dude. Everything aligned for them. They made all the money and they just thought they would get rid of him. This is still to this day, one of the most atrocious acts of human behavior I've ever seen. So they bought over $1.1 million of other property. Like it's registered here. You can look for it yourself. I'm not going to tell you where it is, but it's a little, it looks like a little cottage almost, something like that. And they bought the land adjacent to it as well. So they're buying, they're buying a big giant lot of land and they were going to build a massive ass house because they bought it on, uh, when did they buy it? They bought it December, 2020. So they bought this property in the height of their success before they went to Bali, before they rehomed H and everything. Likely we're going to tear, you know, they were going to live in this big nice house in Ohio and keep it or rent it and then they were going to build a giant ass property on this piece of land they bought that was adjacent or they were just going to buy up land and start investing so this is like I don't know if they've sold it since but they've definitely bought lots and lots and lots of properties under Micah's old name too so just saying it needs to be said that these people made so much money and were investing so much money. Like you look at Bits of Bish. Bits of Bish doesn't even have has half, has half the subscribers that Micah has. And Bits, some people are saying she's worth like 1.5 million. I highly doubt it. Let's say she is. And Bits of Bish is over there bidding on houses she'll never be able to afford, right? Let's say she is. Micah was double her platform. And then James has a million plus subscribers. They were making six, eight figures a year easily. And they were banking, they were buying cars, they were buying properties, they're doing all this stuff because of H. And that is why I stand here in front of you. All this you see here was because of what Micah did. It started with her. Everything started with her. And so now that she, she wants to call the police on me, I'm sitting here thinking, are you really, really, really that dumb? Are you, you and James sitting in your little, your little castle in Ohio thinking, let's just call the local police where he is. Like you, are you, I don't understand how dumb people can be. Look at me, Micah and James. Really? Really? What did you think was going to happen? You think I was just going to go silent and get scared and delete all my videos about you? Are you crazy? Come at me legally if you're going to come at me. Don't be a bunch of babies and call the police. If you want to reach out to me and talk to me about your situation, I'm happy to hear it from you guys. But Micah, let me be clear, Okay. If you plan on coming back and we're really excited about me going silent about you, think again. Think again. Okay? How do you, you, you're so narcissistic, you can't think. Like, if you drop a video, yeah, you're going to get paid. People are going to hate watch the shit out of that video, okay? Every commentator, me, Sloan, you know, deaf, every, com every, every single commentator is going to comment on your video. Every single one, you're going to get a lot of hits. But you're going to fade. I hope you do come back. I hope you do. So you can see the decline in your views and the people are going to leave you hate comments. You're going to have to turn every comment off in your video. And maybe you can avoid, you know, you can just ignore the hate and come back and see if your, your loyal fans will still follow you. Maybe that's the case. And maybe that's what you're trying to do. Do yourself a favor, Micah. Go do something else. Go make an honest person out of yourself and go get a real job somewhere. Okay? James is over there cleaning cars and getting away with it. And we're I, until I find a way to make sure that he's all accountable... I'm not giving up on your stories. You guys did the worst thing you could possibly do to any human being ever. And you ruined a little kid's life. Okay, we're not even going to see the ramifications of what happened to H until way later in his life. And you, you trauma, trauma, you brought this kid from a, from a world that he was born in to a place he didn't speak your language, taped his thumb, treated him badly. I know the stories. Told your children that he's going to kill them in their sleep. Okay? Just treated him like a secondhand citizen in his own house made tons of money, 
tons of money, bought properties, bought vehicles, bought three, bought three properties, you bought a house, you bought two houses and a big giant property, two Range Rovers and a BMW. You went to Bali after you rehomed him. You rehomed him on Facebook and you're just sitting there thinking you're going to be able to come back from this. You need to chill. You need to get off and go get counseling. You are a terrible human being. You treated a child the way no child should ever be treated by anybody in their life. And you were supposed to be his parents, James and Micah. You were supposed to love him. What you did is still one of the most atrocious things anybody could have ever done to anybody. And shame on you for trying to get other people in trouble, legally and otherwise. Go for it. You know what? Even if you wanted to sue me and you could, maybe you can. I'm taking that shit right to court. Let's do this. Sue me. Let's go. Let's open it up for discovery. Let's do this. Because the only people that's going to lose is you. Yeah, maybe I'll lose money. I don't care. It's worth it to fight you in court in a public setting. Come and sue me. Sue me, sue me, sue me. Let's do this. Just call a lawyer in Canada. That's all you have to do. Call the police. We'll do nothing for you. I hope that just deserves. I hope that you get what you deserve, which is to be removed from the social media platform and to not make money with Stafford Garage. You guys don't deserve to be on this platform. You abused it and you abused a child to get to where you were. You're disgusting. And I can't believe that there are people still support you. I cannot believe it. Disgusting excuses for human beings. Nasty. All right. All right. One more thing before we get going. My wife has been like, you got to open up these freaking packages. I keep getting packages from people and I love it. I just, I've always been so busy. And I always forget, but let's open some packages. We got some time. All right. This one doesn't have a name on it. Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Aloha pineapple from Holly. Aloha pineapple. That's amazing. Incredible. See, these are the, this is it. This is the thoughtful gifts that make me happy. This is amazing. You know that's going on the back wall. That is just, it looks, it just, it's a realistic ass pineapple. Like that's, what else could you ask for? That's amazing, Holly. Thank you very much. <laughs> Love it. You see it? Sweet. All right, let's open another one. Another Amazon. Okay, okay. Gift for you. Remember when you were dancing and your belt was undone? You mentioned you'd like to undo your belt when you sit because it's comfy. Problem solved. Keep up the hard work. I love what you're doing for children. Thanks. Aaron McKinnon. Aaron is OG. What is this, Aaron? Let's, let's find out. <laughs> Suspenders with like a ring. What's the ring for? What's this for? Okay, so... Oh, I see. So it goes around the belt and it just like, oh, I, that's really cool. I see. Okay. So it goes around your belt loops, right? And then it's, it clips around the belt loop and holds your pants like this. So there's nothing in the front. Aaron, these are amazing. Good gift. Incredible idea. Ladies, get these for your husbands and your boyfriends who have bellies, who have dad bods. Aaron, that's an amazing, that's a great gift. I never even know those existed. You are a hero. What is the ring for, though? Is this... That's the Monopoly guy. Aloha! <laughs> that's whatever. From Lynn. From Lynn Adams. Earth Josh. All right, your soul, let your soul shine. That's really nice. Okay. Today's prayer. Perhaps this is the moment for which you have been created. That's nice. Something tells me Lynn is a lovely lady. Just a lovely lady. Probably makes good apple pie. Thank you. Thank your wife for supporting your channel. I can't be easy for her to see you threatened. Do you explain your children why you don't want them on the video without you? Yeah, I do. I do explain it to them. I came upon your channel on YouTube by accident. I watched you as you described and picked apart Love Meg and others for taking PPP loans. I fell further into the rabbit hole with videos about Micah and fathering autism. I've watched family vloggers for a while and never looked at it from your point of view. As a mom of adult children, I enjoyed watching the kids as they had fun and grew up. I changed my views based on your YouTube channel. What a sad world we live in when parents have to worry about perverts fantasizing about their children. That's right. Simply playing or swimming the channel sexualizing a daughter still need to worry. That is so sad. Thank you for what you're doing to protect children. God bless Lynn. Lynn, you're just a, you're just a gem. Okay. Lynn 
is a gem. I bet you she's a good cook too. Something tells me with the way that she writes, she's a good cook. Lynn, are you? Oh, Lynn, you have no idea. You have no idea what you've done. Yes, that is Thundercats. Like original Thundercats shirt. Oh, it's so good. Lynn, your kids are lucky to have you. Lynn is the best. Got the Sword of Omens on there. Oh man, I'm wearing the shirt. Uh, excuse me. A little privacy, please. My eyes are up here. Boom, is that badass or what? Lynn, you just made my day. Week, nay, month. What's this gonna be? No notes. What is it? What is it? No. We got an Aloha pineapple swearing pillow. Yes. That is amazing. You just got to put stuff in it, I guess, right? You got to zip it and put stuff in it. Oh, yeah. Aloha pineapple. That is incredible. Thank you for this gift. That's going on the wall. Or it's going to be a swear pillow. Can never have too many swear pillows. Let's be real. Okay. Couple more here. Not too many more. We got one from... Wendy in Australia. If there's a deadly spider in here, I'm gonna laugh. Nice picture of some yellow flowers. That's nice. Australia wrapping paper. This is really nicely wrapped. Josh, thanks for opening everyone's eyes to the issues of family vloggers. You're having an impact. Thanks also for the laughs. Aloha, pineapple. You guys love the pineapple, right? Thanks, Mitsubish. All right, what do we got here? Okay. Share or not with the family, Tim Tams. Love me some Tim Tams, not gonna lie. Those things are not being shared. Uh, what? As an amateur Vegemite eater, spread sparingly on your toast. Only real Aussies can layer it on. What the hell is this shit? What is Vegemite? I hear about this. Is this gonna be gross? Perfect for when you're out and about because you can take them anywhere. What is it? Vitamins for vitality. Concentrated yeast extract, barley, wheat, salt. Okay, I'll try it for you. For Sam and Roni, that's nice. They love these. They always end up under the couch. We have like five trillion of these somewhere in the house. They're amazing. And for Gus Gus. Gus Gus. Where is he? Goose goose. Is this a glow in the dark ball? Goose goose. Oh, here he comes. What you do? You got a toy. You got a toy. What's that? You got a toy. Get the toy. Get the toy. Oh, you got the toy. You got the toy. You got the toy. Get the toy. Come on. What's that toy? Who's got that toy? You got a toy. Good boy. He already loves it. Thank you very much, Wendy. Great gifts. I'm not sure about the Vegemite, we'll see. You like your toy? Last one, everybody. What is this, okay. Enjoy your gift from Katie, Mitch, Katie Michelle Oliver. Okay. <laughs> My kids are gonna love you. What the heck? Any of these sunglasses? Oh my god, Everly is gonna love these. This is a set, don't separate. Let's try one on. <laughs> That's awesome. Everly and her friends are gonna love. Weston's gonna get a pair, everybody's gonna get a pair. We'll do a family photo. Boom, that was amazing. Thank you guys for the amazing gifts. Well, that's nice, everybody. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook because that's how my voice gets louder. Micah, so dumb. Take a deep breath from me, everybody. You're amazing, you're incredible. Everything you do is just like my favorite. All your pictures and pockets. And I just, I love hanging out with you guys. I love just spending time and when I, when I get to talk to you, it's like, it's like my favorite time of the day. It just makes everything better. So I hope that you have an amazing, incredible week and uh, just 
stay tuned for this story. It's going to get a little bit crazier, I think. So Mike if plans on coming back. You guys all know it's going to be crazy. There's a, it's a year anniversary almost. So stick with me on this guys. You are my therapy. I hope that you just like know how hot you are. Like, I don't know if you know it, but like, holy smokes. Okay. <laughs> I don't know if you know it. I think you sort of have an inkling, but like, dang. Okay. So I will see you tomorrow.